From the edge of the continent, the shoreline of the Central Oregon coast presents breathtaking vistas of miles of protected beaches with a backdrop of natural beauty, local history and color, outstanding year-round recreation, and temperate climate, our coastal communities are welcoming places to work and play for increasing numbers of people. Also growing are the needs and numbers of families who have become so deluged with problems, every day is a struggle to keep their families from going under. Though nearly half the jobs in the county's trade and service sectors are tourism related, these jobs are often seasonal and typically pay non-family wages. Most people don't think of being one or two paychecks away from homelessness, but that's a reality for some. According to the 2000 census, nearly 24% of all Lincoln County children five years old or younger live below federal poverty level. That means that nearly a quarter of them live in families that can't afford a basic family budget. A health crisis or a job layoff is enough to send these families into a tailspin of missed payments and eventual eviction. All I can say it was, it was awful. It was miserable. I was um, not happy at all. And in order to pretend like I was happy, I used drugs and that didn't get me anywhere. Ocean, <laughs> the wind, the rain, <laughs> and it just don't rain one way, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I was just like, wow, it's a bone chilling cold. It's not just a cold, it's a bone chilling. It goes straight to your bones. First few nights I thought I was gonna die out on the beach, <laughs> thinking I was gonna freeze to death and not wake up. And, and so, the only thing I felt like kept me warm was drinking. You feel very unstable, sad. It's like you don't know what you're gonna do from day to day. And it hurts a lot to see that you can't provide for your kids like you should. We often visualize a homeless person as a single transient male. In fact, families with children are fast becoming the face of homelessness, with children making up about 39% of the homeless population in Lincoln County. A lack of affordable housing and long waiting lists for housing assistance programs further limit their options. With fewer shelters than urban areas, homeless families in our rural towns and communities are more likely to live in cars and campers or stay with friends and relatives. Advocates for the homeless say their numbers are elusive and underreported. But numbers don't tell the real story of homelessness. People do. Like Tony, who wanted custody of his young son. I had a drinking problem, so I'd get like a 12-pack or a case, sometimes a couple cases to meet down my friends down there. And we'd do a bonfire to keep warm most of the night until we pass out. That was a daily ritual. Or Jennifer, leaving an abusive relationship after 15 years. We lived in my friend's garage for about two months, and then we moved to the coast. We stayed in a travel trailer for about five months, and then we spent about two months in a motel. For parents like Chasta and Stuart, separation from their children was painful. I was unable to see them or have anything. I had to arrange specific times and everything to see them at my mother's because I was unable to pick them up due to having everything in my car and living in, out of my car I didn't have a place to take them or be with them. It could have really just happen to anybody. One moment you're okay but next minute you make a couple wrong decisions and you just kind of telescope down to nothing. The lives of persons experiencing homelessness may have started out like ours, but somewhere something went wrong. Maybe they had to decide between going to the doctor or paying the rent 
and never caught up. Or they made the same poor choices they saw their parents making. Sometimes drug and alcohol abuse or mental illness knock them down so hard getting up is more than they can manage on their own. Or to escape destructive relationships they made tough decisions for a safer life for themselves and their children. And children bear an unfair proportion of the burden. Children experiencing homelessness often start their day feeling defeated. Without a place to study, they haven't done their homework. They're embarrassed because they have no school supplies. They're tired if they share a bed or sleep on the couch or floor and likely to have poor hygiene due to lack of showering facilities. Children without stable housing have higher rates of stomach problems, ear infections, asthma, and speech problems. They experience more mental health problems and they're four times as likely to have delayed development. Any of these conditions is enough to seriously and permanently impact their lives if left untreated. In a world where we value and protect our beaches for future generations, what can we do to protect the most vulnerable members of our communities? The supporters of Samaritan House believe that people experiencing homelessness can be empowered to turn their lives around. Samaritan House offers a life-changing program designed to identify and teach missing or inadequate skills needed to live an independent life. Their goal is to break the cycle of homelessness, to give children a better chance of being productive adults. The goal of Samaritan House is to help families achieve self-sufficiency and stable housing. The original shelter was founded in 1988. It had three bedrooms and no cooking facilities. Meals were brought in by volunteers. And in 1999, we added longer-term transitional shelter. And in 2003, we moved into our newly remodeled facility, which is the former Tides Inn Motel. At this time, we are the only homeless family shelter on the Central Oregon coast, and we serve families with children under the age of 18. A referral can be made either by the applicant or by another agency, but the program begins and ends with a relationship established between the client and the case manager. Using a needs assessment tool, the case manager determines the fit of the program to the needs of the applicant. By identifying and rating each family's barriers to success, as well as their strengths, Samaritan House is able to identify those families in greatest needs, as well as the ones who are most likely to succeed as a Samaritan House resident. When I came and did the intake, she told me about how they were going to help me get my life back together and structured and organized the way I needed to. And I knew that I needed that. During their time at Samaritan House, I continued to meet with them regularly to monitor their progress and modify their goals. Because structure and stability has been absent from their lives for so long due to homelessness, at Samaritan House we really stress the need for structured and scheduled activities. During the first 30 days of assistance, residents begin the process of regaining control of their lives. In this initial period of emergency shelter, the focus is on providing the basic necessities for the family. Parents must look for work, get on the public housing list, gather landlord references, deal with health care and mental health issues, and locate child care. Family counseling strengthens the entire family. To be successful at Samaritan House, the residents must have a strong commitment to change their life and be willing to work very hard to do that. Change in a lifestyle is very difficult to do. To do it within a few weeks, even a few months, is even harder to do. Yet that's what we ask of the Samaritan House residents. Families who have met the expectations of the first 30 days and commit to working on self-sufficiency 
may stay another three months in a transitional shelter apartment. For many of these families, this is a time of intensive work with the case manager and classes. Throughout this period, 60% of their paycheck is deposited to apply toward future housing. Occasionally, families need more than four months to repair their credit or rental history or save more funds for other housing. Samaritan House also rents out three transitional housing apartments. Tenants can continue to access services from the shelter, but the low rent they pay goes back to Samaritan House. The public is invited to view some of the area's most beautiful and inspiring coastal gardens during the Secret Garden Tour. The search continues for a stable source of operating revenue, such as creating small businesses that could provide work experience for Samaritan House residents while generating income too. You can make a difference by encouraging your church, business, or service club to be part of an inclusive community that takes responsibility for homelessness. Check the Samaritan House website regularly for ways that you and your business can support the efforts of Samaritan House. Volunteers are needed to participate in events, teach skills, and lead enrichment activities that families would enjoy or find useful. Though our circumstances may be different, we all want the same things. A healthy, safe life for our children. independence and dignity. I think they're proud of me because I have some goals now and I didn't really have goals before that. I was just being a mother. Um, but now I know there's other things that I need to do. It's a lot of work. A lot of the program keeps you really busy and a lot of times I was really stressed out. It's it's a lot to get your life back in order. And if you're willing to do it, then it's a really awesome program, but they don't do it for you. You have to do it on your own. It all starts with something as basic as a roof over our heads. After moving from Samaritan House, Jennifer and her family are doing well in a subsidized apartment. She plans to enter college soon. Chasta, Stuart, and their family also call an apartment home. They've been approved for a loan when they find a house within their budget. When Tony graduates from the transitional housing program of Samaritan House, he'll have earned a certificate that will increase his renting options. His goal is to raise his son in a home of his own. Samaritan House program has proven its ability to help family. Now that they have their own home, can enjoy family meals together, can read stories to their children, and just do simple things like homework together and tuck their children into bed. I believe each and every one of them would tell you that the journey was hard, but it was worth it. Samaritan House on the Oregon coast is here to help families make a new beginning.